think one of the greatest things about going back and reading Tokyo Ghoul is the fact that chapter one has two different variations for it. Uh, Sue Yoshida a couple of years back uh, actually went and redrew the entire chapter and he changed a lot of things within it obviously to make it more enjoyable or make it more pleasing or anything along those lines but he felt like he wanted to redo it and it definitely does showcase a different perspective it carries a lot more emotion the artwork is seemingly better and improved and just everything is a lot more crisp and detailed but even though that redrawn first chapter is really nice and appealing and it's personally probably my favorite i still have this massive love for the original first chapter the very gritty and rough aspect to it has this whole different depiction and desire they kind of give off the same emotion but on different levels and in different variations if that makes sense for me tokyo ghoul has if not one of the strongest first chapters i've ever read for coming into a series that you potentially know nothing about this one packs a punch it has a lot of shock value but it's also very emotional it's very gripping and it kind of reels you into the story bit by bit funny enough it's actually set out extremely methodically it's got clear sections uh, and directions and cohesive ties when you kind of read the chapter coherently it flows really naturally you kind of start off with a big kind of open bit regarding the concept of ghouls and what they are and what they do and how monstrous they are and then you have the portrayal of Carnegie and Hide uh, what they're like as individual characters but then what they're like kind of with each other and how much they mean to each other you get a lot of insights uh, for kind of the atmosphere of the story from the get-go and you get a lot of insight for Rize as a character I think the biggest thing starting off straight off the bat is kind of Carnegie's impression because obviously the following chapters after it is extremely quick the story changes incredibly fast and if you're not really paying attention to the first chapter everything to kind of come for it is not going to be as impactful so going back and paying attention to Carnegie specifically some of the small nuances that he has his emotions specifically and how that ultimately changes in the following chapters is really impactful and important and it, it kind of comes to showcase a, a pretty deeper side for him one thing that I think a lot of people even overlooked is Carnegie's sexuality as throughout the entirety of the story or at least a good portion of it Carnegie's kind of asexual to an extent he's so emotionally broken and detached and kind of driven to the wall in, in terms of his mentality that sex and the desire for it is completely gone obviously that changes in Tokyo Ghoul Re when the kind of reception of his emotion slowly starts to return and his connection with Toka obviously grows deeper and stronger and then it gets to that point however in the first chapter it's completely overlooked that he actually is sexually kind of attracted to Rize you know not even just thinking that she's pretty or very good looking or anything like that but actually kind of looking at her breasts and it's like okay that's something I completely missed and going back and reliving that it, it plays a lot of emphasis to his character and where it actually goes these very small nuances completely disappear and evaporate so quickly because of this change in character and it has a lot of weight to it both versions of Carnegie in the first chapter the original and the redrawn are pretty similar if anything the redrawn goes through a lot more effort to explain Carnegie and pull a lot more emotion for him uh, even going back to talking about his father that died his mother that died and the fact that he's living with his aunt but he feels completely out of place it definitely makes you feel a lot more for his character he feels a lot more relatable and obviously that comes with a lot more experience hence why there's a lot more there to offer in terms of the redrawn chapter but even so the original chapter doesn't really do a bad job in understanding Carnegie. On a surface level, yes, you understand him and you're appreciative of it because throughout the story, it obviously grows a lot bigger and you become a lot more involved within his character. But in the redrawn version, like I said, way more explored, way more in depth, and a lot more people can emotionally connect with him, which is really important. Uh, even Hide. Uh, Hide is pretty superficial in the first chapter. We know he plays a very important role to Carnegie and he's like a bit of a goofball, and that's kind of the borderline ending for it however in the redrawn chapter he actually plays a lot more of a suspicious kind of held back kind of role he still has that goofy desire but some of the ways that Sue Ishida depicted him in the redrawn version was very meticulous it was very eerie and dark and if you were to kind of read Tokyo Ghoul for the first time and read that redrawn chapter first you would definitely think that you know Hide knows a lot more than he originally intends uh, or even the fact that he could potentially be a ghoul as that's kind of like the 
play on words and the little joke that he plays on Carnegie. So obviously artwork goes a long way in depicting that and Sue Ishida did not waste any time in that redrawn chapter to kind of depict that alluring, mysterious, eerie nature surrounding his characters. Now Rize on the other hand is pretty similar to Hide and Carnegie as well. In the original chapter she's depicted very gruesomely, not really understanding her as a character, not really showcasing her emotions, so you don't really feel for her to that extent, which is perfectly fine. And even when Ishida depicted her as a girl, she was it was very rough. It was very jagged and just, it was gruesome. It actually felt rather fitting for the nature of ghouls. It might have been a little bit over the top, but at the same time, it was perfect. You know, it was the perfect amount for it. And it really is a massive shock value because you kind of get the idea of what a ghoul is and what they are. But when you see them for the first time within the story, for Rize to be this very beautiful woman to then turning into this monstrosity of a being, it kind of shakes you a bit. And just the way that issued a drew her was over the top but phenomenal at the same time for you know that ghoul aesthetic in the redrawn chapter he spends a bit more time making her feel uh, important like she has a bit of weight behind her character she kind of confides in Carnegie quite a bit and shares these very subtle emotional tidbits with him that makes her feel a lot more human than she really is so when she does turn into a ghoul it's not as terrified or as horrific as it originally was but it's a lot more sophisticated honestly for me a lot more scarier. It's kind of weird to explain that, you know, the original chapter and the redrawn chapter are two different types of horror. One's over the top, gruesome, gritty. The other one's more sophisticated and mysterious and just lack of no control. I don't know if you guys get that same feeling or if you understand what I'm trying to say, but something with the redrawn chapter makes it seem a lot more scarier from my point of view. And I guess that just comes from my personal preference as well. It's almost like you feel betrayed, like you are in Carnegie's situation, like you've come to understand her character and who she is and you know she's shared all these emotional things with you but then she turns into this horrific ghoul which isn't depicted very overly horrifying but it's still extremely scary and obviously dangerous as she completely obliterates Carnegie from the get-go. Honestly I think the depiction of ghouls in both first chapters are just great all around. I think it's a very alluring uh, kind of concept that's never really been done before to such a gruesome extent. In terms of like these supernatural beings the closest things that ghouls come to are vampires. And vampires can be depicted a lot of different ways, very horrific or very, uh, you know, human-like. For the ghouls' sake, it's something completely different, and it's still extremely horrified and just beautiful in every aspect so it dr just drives you to the end of the story when you hit that ghoul bit it's kind of just like you lose track of time and you're kind of lost in the artwork and a very kind of torturous thing so many emotions uh kind of oozing out of Karnak at this point you can kind of feel his desperation to escape and kind of his mind folding over trying to understand the situation witnessing a ghoul for the first time when you know a day or two ago he was just previously questioning if ghouls exist the biggest thing for me is the portrayal of emotion and both original and redrawn have done a phenomenal job in kind of relaying that to such an extent just seeing it in the character's face uh, and how they interact with one another is very beautiful and it's played off extremely well, uh, especially in the redrawn chapter. Everything's just a lot more crisp. It's a lot more different perspectives for it. You get a lot more of a worldly feel to it. If I were to compare it dimensionally wise, it's very one dimensional in the original chapter, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but in comparison to the redrawn, there's a lot more of an impact, a lot more weight, and a lot more of a dimension to work with, you know, a lot more of a surrounding incorporating everything. I couldn't talk about the first chapter without mentioning probably the biggest hook, you know, the finale of the chapter with the Rize's organs being transferred into Carnegie, you know, the twist of the story, but also that kind of iconic panel with Carnegie saying if he was the main character of a novel that it would certainly be a tragedy. And I think for a lot of people, including myself, this is what kind of is a, a perfect conclusion for the first chapter. You get a very clear start to finish. You have a lot of questions at the beginning that also get answered at the end of the chapter, but then you also have so many more questions uh, coming in. When you read those lines of tragedy and seeing Carnegie's face and his eyes opening up and one of them is just this ghoul eye, you're so very confused. You're so attracted and so lured to the idea of it that it's such a, a thrilling moment. It's, it's incredible to read and it just, it makes you want more. For me, one of the strong chapters and you know you could call that personal bias but just everything about both 
you know, the original and the rejoin is just kind of beautifully depicted. It flows extremely well. It's so easy to digest. There's so many emotions kind of going around. Everything's really nice and just works well with one another. Nothing seems jarring. You wouldn't even realize that a day or two has passed in the first chapter, but everything just is smoothed over so beautifully and just works well together. And then you have this massive impactful ghoul moment, and then you have that final piece of the puzzle for the chapter. You end off on such a high note that you just want more. Without a doubt, I think Soye should have created a very iconic first chapter, and then outdone himself again by redrawing that first chapter, keeping everything iconic in it, just improving the artwork, improving the atmosphere and the emotion, but keeping very specific and important panel pieces, and he's just done a phenomenal job with it, in both aspects. And I think it would be amazing if people went back and gave it a read, whether it's the original or the redrawn of both. It's a really impactful first chapter, and it does an incredible job in luring you into the story. So with that being said, that is basically it. For me, Togo Ghoul has a phenomenal first chapter. It's so impactful. There's so much importance in there and it's just incredibly well done. If you do go back and check it out after all these years, let me know what you think because I'm pretty interested to hear your thoughts. But I'm actually going to end the video off here. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.